Hello and welcome to Kale Life. My name is Ashwati and in today's episode, we're exploring the steps you need to take as an international student planning to study in Canada. Some basic questions to get you started on your research. We've assembled videos from professionals across universities and colleges in Canada and we are really excited to share them with you. I'd say nine times out of 10, students come here because um, of our, uh, come here to Canada because of our openness and diversity and multicultural, um, you know, multiculturalism is alive in so many um, different aspects of, of Canadian lifestyle. It's easy for them to adapt and make friends. Um, chances are they know someone who's come to Canada before and so they, they want to uh, connect and they want to learn more about that experience. Um, in terms of um, excellence in, in academia and research, we have some of the world's um, highest ranked universities and colleges and, and to that uh, we attract one, some of the best faculty members. So they're getting quality education and, and the learning experience is rich and, and filled with innovative opportunities. Once you find an institution that is the right fit for you, it's the same as buying clothes. You always want to get clothes that would fit you well. So likewise it is when you're going to an institution you want to find an institution that is able to provide you with the supports that you're looking for that has the kind of environment that you're thinking about. For me, when I came to Canada, I chose Trent University because I wanted to be in a smaller size, more personal and intimate learning environment. So I wanted that personal connection that I was able to build with professors. And for that reason, I chose Trent University. Whereas there are some students who are looking for a big city um, in a big classroom environment. And there are some students who are looking for that more personalized environment. So ask questions about the university environment and culture so that you can find what's the right fit for you. Typically universities and colleges are gonna ask for what we call full academic disclosure, meaning you have to send all your academic documents from, uh, from every institution uh, that you've been to. Having said that, that's typically only secondary school or high school. So for us, that's grade nine to 12. Um, so for example, um, if you studied uh, in, in grade 11 or your first year of international baccalaureate study at one school and then you switch to another school after, send us all of those documents. And the reason being is some institutions, not all, but some can can make an offer of admission based on your grade 11 marks before we even see your grade 12 marks come through. Um, certainly Ontario Tech uh, uh, functions that way where sometimes we don't even have a single grade for a grade 12 uh, student, your final year of high school, but we're able to make uh, an offer of admission based on previous work that you've done just seeing that you're, you've done really exceptionally. So um, whether it's high school or, or if you've studied at a college or even another university, uh, getting all of those academic documents together uh, is, is really important. But what we don't need to see is your, your elementary school. So anything before, uh, uh, before grade eight is, is, is not needed. But really those grade 11 and 12 years, your final two years of high school, uh, that's what we wanna see. There are basically four skills, right? As reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So a test that, or an examination or assessment that actually tries to have you use one or more of those skills at the same time and demonstrate that you can do that in an efficient way and an effective way, that's an integrated test, right? So why is that important? Because that's what you're going to do. When you finish, when you get in your degree program, you're not going to walk into a class and read a book, right? You're going to read beforehand. You're going to walk into a lecture and you're going to read a PowerPoint and you're going to listen to a professor and you're going to ask questions about to the professor about what, he's, what he or she is talking about. You're integrating those skills. Um, right now, our integration you and me are two of the skills, listening and speaking, right? Now, um, 
I could, I suppose, if I was better at this, I could be typing as well and entering things into the chat, right? And then I am doing uh, more than just uh, listening and speaking. I'm, I'm also writing at the same time. And these are the things that make for a successful student. It has its roots in Canada. It was uh, originally founded by a Canadian university, um, and uh, which is in, in my hometown of Ottawa. Uh, and um, it has always showed very high efficacy uh, for uh, students that are presenting ESL tests. And we, we can be confident um, that students that are um, entering our universities and colleges with, with Kale uh, are, are, are going to perform at a, a satisfactory uh, English level. So um, I, to my knowledge, every single university in this country accepts Kale. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think there are any that don't. It's, uh, uh, it's a very reputable test and it's, it's something that it has been homegrown in Canada, so very relevant to students that are looking to study uh, in, in Canada. Taking Canadian tests is investment in the future. You know, you're invested because you're preparing for a test. And, and this is a requirement that many, many students have to undergo in order to be able to, uh, to come into the country and be admitted or what have you. And so that investment really just is another one in the future. Certainly people who aspire to stay, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a logical commitment to make as you think about what that future aspiration is. On our website, actually, we have a really nice uh, expense sheet <laughs> for students to, uh, to, to sort of like check off or tick. Um, we help students plan right from the start. We know um, what it's like uh, to, you know, to, to, to bear the financial burden of a student. Um, it's, it's, um, it's not easy, first of all, making that decision. And it's, you know, it's an investment in their future. And so our team created a handy expense sheet from um, like uh, that would show that would sort of highlight your monthly expenses to get uh, to get people thinking about what they might need to plan for. So you know tuition costs are are right up there, but what might you require for um, for food, for groceries, for example, for eating out, for transportation, and cost of living differs from province to province. So while they say rent might be you know more expensive in toronto or vancouver right compared to halifax um i i did my research uh when we were creating this hand handy uh, cheat sheet so to speak and i was blown away by internet costs in halifax like it's not something you would think about right um because it's pretty competitive all the different companies that offer you things like internet but um, you know, while rent prices are expensive in bigger cities like uh, Vancouver and Toronto, um, things like internet and groceries are more expensive in smaller cities. So it balances out because of the dem demand and demographic. And we like to talk to students through our Head Start program about how to budget and save money. We also have support systems for um, students to access our career center to help them look for part-time jobs while they're here in, um, in Canada. And it's great that students can actually find jobs on campus too. Um, so we, we have a really great um, uh, student association, student club on campus, and they are the biggest employer for students. If you are considering Canada as your destination, you have so many options. Um, it is very important for students to consider lifestyle because each province in Canada will provide them with a different experience, right? Uh, so that's, I think, key for students to choose. Okay, so you're telling me Canada is great, institutions are awesome, so it doesn't matter if I go here or I, or I go there and I have like a bunch of institutions in different provinces that offer the option that I'm looking for, so how I'm gonna make my choice, how I'm gonna make a decision. Look for your li lifestyle. Look for what that province and that city can offer you. Um, are you? It's that what you what you expect for your life, right? It's that what you want to pursue. And then look also, as Dana, Dana said, like institutions can be a little bit different in terms of the services that they offer. Um, so try to look for that. Is there something in particular that you believe is very important for you that cannot you, you cannot 
uh, have that not to be available. So that, that can also be another factor to consider when you are looking for an option here in Canada. Thank you for watching. And thank you to all our guests for providing great information. These are only a few of our guests and I know you have more questions. So I urge you to check out the rest of our videos and see if your questions have been answered by our amazing panel of guests. If you still have more questions, I would really like if you joined us on Thursday live so you can get your questions answered in real time. Apart from international education, we also have kale test lessons on a separate playlist called Kale Prep with Brandy. We drop a lesson every Tuesday. Please do check it out. Our next episode will be on Thursday, 28th of November at 12 p.m. PST. So please join us and also invite anybody else who is interested in studying in Canada. Until then, do subscribe to our channel here and also connect with us on our Instagram account at KaleTest. Please stay safe and have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Bye.